Jeff, I think we're lost. I think so. <laughs> so here we are, Jeff, lost in the wilderness with the clothes on our back, a few basic things, and we're gonna try to survive for 24 hours in the remote reaches of northwestern British Columbia. So what I've got with me, I brought a backpack. In here I've got um, uh, a hatchet, a water bottle, uh, a hair straightener, down pillow, sleeping bag, prime rib roast, chainsaw, generator, laptop, uh, iPhone, inverter, just sort of, is that pretty much what you brought? That should just about do it. Yeah, I usually bring just about that. Yeah. Did, did I underpack? Uh, actually, I think you're a little overpacked, but uh, you know, uh, each to his own, right? So. I was just kidding. <laughs> All I have, just kidding. All I have in here is that. So we're gonna try to establish ourselves as best we can for shelter, sleep, warmth, fire, yeah. water, food last. That's right. I'm about to deploy the secret weapon, Quinn. Okay, let's see it. So there have been many ways suggested of carrying a saw blade. And one of Whoa, the- Whoa, what? One of the ways that is effective is inside of a belt. You have got to like be that. kidding me. And we have a 38 <laughs> blade that I'll make into a buck saw here. So while I'm doing, <laughs> while I'm doing that- Is that, did that come like that? No. Oh. While I'm doing that, it would be great if you gathered us a bunch of pencil sized twigs like this into a hug size bundle. And we'll use that to get our fire going when we're ready. I think I can do that. Okay. First will be our shelter fire combination. Shelter fire. That's where we're gonna start. Second. And then we may look at some water if we run out of water by then. Third. Third, way down the road, if we know that we've got our shelter set up properly, we may start looking for some edible plants or other food sources. But if you don't know what you're doing in that regard, it's not a good idea because if you eat the wrong stuff out here, you can wind up worse okay. than had you eaten nothing. So we'll just tighten her up. Oh yeah. Lift it all up, yeah. Don't drop it on my hand. Oh. Okay. The par buckle? The par buckle, we can do it over here again. That's good. Okay. So when I first uh, spent the night in the bush like this, I used all logs like this all the way across and then tried to build up with boughs. And it was a very hard night and I've since found that through studying guys like Morris Kohansky, you, you lay on things like this and there's give under the hips and it takes very few boughs now over top of this to make a comfortable bed. And now we'll just get Quinn to lay in the bed and we'll either add sticks or take them away to reach the desired level of flexible comfort and we'll be good to go. So you want me to lie down? Yeah, if you can, yeah. Oh, time. That's actually impressively comfortable. So when we're adding the boughs, we want to add them the same way they're on the tree. So you want the green side up and we'll, we'll gather a bunch of them and we'll lay them in a herringbone pattern all the way down. So it turns out uh, old MacGyver here had not only tricks in his belt, but he also had a few tricks up his sleeve. Everything that you see here, sans the trees, was in his coat pockets. So we got a few more steps here? Uh, we'll put the, the drop sheet in front and then we'll build the other bed and we'll light up our fire and we'll be good to go. Okay. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna stop being so silly, and I'm gonna openly state that this is hard. Like really hard. That's I'm right. sweating, I'm tired, I could have gone to bed an hour ago. I think yes, it is, it is exhausting to get a proper camp set up, but now that we're set up, we're in good shape. If you look at it in terms of calories burned, up front, we probably burned a lot, working like workhorses. Yeah. We built the structure, but it's probably less than you would if you were up all night cold, wet, searching for firewood, yeah. scrambling around, no sleep. No sleep, wandering through the bush. That's mm -hmm. right, that's, that's generally not the best practice. So be prepared, come with the right stuff, and take the time to do it right. So phase one and phase two, fire and shelter, most important. Yeah. There's not a chance we're getting to the fresh water uh, or the food issue. Uh, we're getting to the fire stage now. 
We're not going to use a match and lighter. We're not no. going to do a friction fire. No. How are we going to get a fire going? So I think the uh, method that we'll use is a method that uh, I rely on quite a bit called the ferro-ceronium rod. It's a metal match is the Bushman's term. Um, it's, it's the modern version of the old flint and steel and uh, we'll use that and see if we can make something work. And what's the advantage to that? Like you, I know there is an advantage. It takes up no weight in your pocket. If I were to fall in the water with, uh, with the metal match on me, I would still be able to get out and it would produce a, a flame right away or a spark. And if you're good, if you practice, it's actually the most reliable way of getting a fire going. If you don't practice, then leave them at home and bring matches because it's not going to work for you. Well, I'm not going to thank you yet. I'll thank you in the morning. I but, uh, but I will say that, that I'm impressed. And so we're just going to keep feeding this fire all night. We have a couple chunks over there that should last us four or five hours when we throw them on. We'll allow the, we've put up some of our larger chunks and you can see they're already, they've already caught fire. We'll allow the fire to progress all the way along and it'll be a long log fire as long as we are tall so it heats us entirely. And then when it gets down, we'll throw some of our larger chunks on and get as much sleep as we can. And uh, you know, the cold will wake us. We'll, we'll, we'll start to feel cold and we'll get up and reload the fire until it gets gray or light in the morning and then my advice is to head out. Did you like that? That was uh, pretty bad. That was an original score I just composed for you. Awesome. It's called Thank Surviving. You. We survived, a little tired, a little groggy. Wasn't the best sleep of my life. Last night there was a few little creaks and cracks in the woods and uh, it was, it's a little spooky. This kind of thing is real. You know, this isn't an artificial environment we're in. If you don't work with, with what you have, then things aren't gonna go well for you. But we would totally be able to spend another night out here. If we had to, we could. Fortunately, we don't have to. We're going to be at Tim Hortons in the next 20 minutes here. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks again, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Did you like that? That was uh, pretty fabulous. That was an original score I just composed for you. Awesome. It's called Thank Surviving. You.